You've done everyone. I don't want to get into making a band because that was a hot mess. Uh, not from you, but just uh, there's just too much there. And I'm sure all of this is chronicled in Dance Your Dance. Well, Dance Your Dance is actually eight steps to unleash your passion oh. and live your dream. Right, so it's like not that. autobiographical. I use some of the situations and the circumstances that I went through, that I overcame, to use as examples, because through those situations, I gained revelation. And revelation allowed me to perfect my methodology in building superstars and now allowing myself to touch dreamers, not only in dance, but entrepreneurs, visionaries, lawyers, doctors, people who have a dream. So, you know, it was definitely about these eight steps. It's not autobiographical. There are situations and circumstances that I will give you as insight to what you can relate to. And obviously, it is about the business and there are some jewels there, but they only support the steps. And this book is really about inspiration and transformation. Lorian, uh, this is uh, Drew McCaskill. I'm a uh, uh, co-host on the Karen Hunter show. And I'm curious about when you, in the book, do you talk about perseverance? Because I've seen you like constantly, like you just talked about the tapper and fighting for your vision, fighting for inclusion. How, how do you talk about in the book that, that gut to where, whether you go ahead and fight and fight hard, how hard do you fight? When do you decide, okay, I might lose this job, but I'm about to fight for what I think is right. You know, it like makes me emotional because I really believe that God gave me the gift of perseverance. You know, Um, there is a step. It's step four. It's stay in your yes. And I believe in the dream that God gave you. There is a multitude of yeses. So when I face the adversity, when I face the no's, what I did and what I perfected was how to hang on to the feeling of that dream. Some people get it in a vision. I got it in a feeling. I knew that when I arrived at what would be my purpose, my destiny, that I would feel a certain way. And so anything that didn't align with that feeling was a flag for me to stay in my yet, which created an understanding of how to persevere. Now, it's not easy. A lot of people act like it's easy. No, there were many nights where I stayed curled up in a ball, fighting to choose the correct narrative. And I think that's why I wrote the book, so that people would have an option. People would have someone to identify that didn't have an easy road, that faced the no's and actually fought through, persevered through being laughed at, ridiculed, misunderstood. But it was that desire to hang on to the dream that God gave me that really showed me how to become the dream and live the dream. So it's not easy, but there is a defining law to you trusting the dream that God gave you. I love. But what if people uh, wait, don't wait, see the dream, though, no, Lorianne? Like, what if people don't see it? Like, you're talking about creativity and in the, and, and the creative world. And you're, and you're giving them the dream. You're laying it out. You're drawing a picture of the dream. You're dancing the dream right in front of them, and they still don't see it. Like, then what? Well, here's the thing. Step one is dare to dream. Now, I don't believe that God would give one person a dream and not the other. We're not wired like that. Everybody has a passion. You're unique to your own dream, to your own dance. There is something in you that makes you feel alive that makes you want to get up in the morning, that makes you feel like the very fullest version of yourself, that makes you feel like yourself by yourself. Those are breadcrumbs to your dream, to you understanding how to get to that perfect place where you're living the dream. Everyone has that point of contact. But I think Drew is saying, but Drew is saying, what if people, because you you had to convince, uh, you know, Hype Williams or whomever to see your dream the way you see it, and if you're constantly, and, and they hold the purse string, they hold the access, they hold the lane, how do you manifest your dream if your dream is dependent upon somebody else giving you a thumbs up? Ultimately, it's never about anyone else giving you the thumbs up. It's about understanding the circumstances. And while you're there, it's about understanding the choice that you need to make. It's how you respond to the situation. I wasn't aggressive. I sat patiently. I knew that this was part of what I needed to do to produce the vision 
that Missy had asked me to produce. So because it came from a pure place, I knew that I would get the opening. So when someone's actually stopping you, you have to maintain your yes. And if that's not the situation that will open the opportunity for you, then that no is leading you towards your yes. So when you're faced with a no, you have to understand that it's moving you towards another choice. If Hype didn't do it, it would have been his loss, and the next person would have got what actually made that video really creative and awkward in another way. But I didn't define myself by his no. Had he said no, I would have held on to that creativity and unleashed it somewhere else. Yeah, I love that. Um, For example, I remember begging Alicia to use a certain piano. Wait, hold on, uh, hold on. Uh, to you, she's Alicia. To us, oh. she's Alicia Keys. We don't, we yeah. don't know her like that, Lori Gibson, <laughs> Lori Ann Gibson. <laughs> well, I remember begging Alicia Keys to build this piano, and at first, she was like, "No, I just need a regular piano." And so, I didn't have the opportunity with her at first to build it, but later. I then ended up building the bubble piano for Gaga and actually changing the idea of what a piano could look like in a performance. So I held on to that creativity. I held on to that dream. Even though someone said no to me, I didn't allow them to change what I felt was a really huge moment uh, in my creativity. And you've choreographed several videos for Lady Gaga. Um, so y- y'all can uh, check. I mean, uh, come on. We're talking Poker Face, uh, Beautiful Dirty Rich, uh, Just Dance, uh, Love Game, Paparazzi, Paparazzi, Bad Romance. Come on now. Telephone. What? Alejandro? Oh, my goodness. Uh, the Edge of Glory, Judas, Born This Way, <sighs> You and I. Come on, Lorianne Gibson. Okay. So when you said the word narrative, um, in doing some research on you, I realized that I don't know what your sign is, but you have been very, very, very willful in crafting your own narrative. Now I know you come from Canada or Ontario, Mm -hmm. but I don't know much else about you. And I think that's on purpose. And how were you able to do that in this social media space where everything, including the color of your underwear is out there for display? How have you been willfully able to craft your own narrative? I think the value is in the process. You know, a lot of what's happening today is about instant choices, looking like someone else, comparing yourself. I think for me, I embraced my dream early and I understood that God gave me a specific imprint, a specific DNA. And part of that was trusting what he had put in me, which was not about what people say I should do, but what was necessary for me to be the best version of myself. So, I didn't set out to not to be mysterious. I just set out to really dance my dance. And in doing so, I always wanted to be respected. I said very early that when I walked in the room, I wanted them to respect me. I didn't want to be known for who I married, who I slept with, who I dated. I didn't want any of that. I wanted to be respected. I wanted to be effective. I wanted my gift to have the power. And so... I decided that very early and that road was not very easy, but now that I'm living my dream, I can say that it was worth it. So tell me about little Lorianne Gibson and tell me about (laughs) Ontario, Canada, because you know, for black folk here in America, we're having this, a particular kind of uh, experience. And you've been here long enough to, to, you know, to know that. Not that it's mm-hmm. widely different in Ontario, but talk, talk a little bit about you know, where you grew up and who inspired you to, to follow this path to dance. I think that you know, globally, it is a challenge, obviously, being black and being female. When I was young, I had a white ballet teacher tell me that I would never be a ballerina because my feet were flat and my back was arched. And very early, it felt like a flag to me. I was like, that doesn't really line up with what God told me. Hmm. Who do I believe? Instinctually, I knew to hang on to what God had put in my spirit and my soul. And then a few years later, I went to the O'Keefe Center and saw Alvin Ailey. And I saw the most incredibly gifted Black female dancers dancing. And I saw the Dance Theater of Harlem, and they were on point. 
and very quickly I understood that Mr. Christopher didn't know what he was talking about, that he had a level of ignorance that the world sometimes, you know, adapts, but it wasn't my truth, and it wasn't God's truth because I'd seen these miraculous beings who were the same color as me, who had the same arch in their back, and not only were they brilliant, but they were out dancing plenty of white swans. So I held on to that as a source of evidence, and I moved towards that. And I went to Alvin Ailey at the age of 17 and um, very quickly understood that my instincts were right. But, again, I would face that adversity when I came to America time and time again. I still face it. If I was a white male, the things that I have done, my resume, I would probably have corner offices in every building. But because I was a black female, I was challenged over and over again. But I knew that this was part of my purpose. So I didn't allow it to break me. It just made me stronger. But there is definitely an injustice. But again, that's why I wrote the book, Dance Your Dance. Because once you persevere, once you continue to understand that your color or your sexuality doesn't stop you from unleashing your passion and what it is you have to do, then you will be who you know that you're born to be. Lorianne, a question for you. Like, I'm, I'm, you, everyone talks about you as a choreographer, but what you've done for artists is much more than choreography. It really is creative direction. It's artist management. Can you talk a little bit about, <clears throat> not that being a choreographer is in any way a diminish, but can you talk about how people sort of try to pigeonhole, particularly Black women in entertainment? that they don't give them the full breadth of who they are. Yeah, I think that that's, uh, you know, it's intimidating. Um, as a choreographer, I hold that gift very near and dear to me. But I also understood that I had the ability to have vision as a creative director, as a director. I'm a visionary, so I see the entire picture. When I hear a record, I see it. I only recently started to hear music. I would see music when you would play it for me. Um, I would see it. I would see uh, shapes. I would see worlds. I, I create worlds. I create an experience. So, yes, that is from the development of the artist to building of the brand to building of the world to directing an entire team from the lighting to the wardrobe to how it's shot. How is it experienced by the fan? But these are different gifts. And when I realized I had multiple gifts, I was able to understand that, you know, I was not just a choreographer, even though that gift is powerful unto itself, but that I was able to create an entire vision. So it was incredibly intimidating. And I did face a high level of oppression, both by white people and black people. And because I had a resistance, to what they said I could do, which goes back to my book, Staying in Your Yes. I refused to give up on what I knew I could do. And so I kept pushing and I kept pushing because if the feeling of my dream was driving me, then they could not possibly be right. So every time I had a challenge, I would say to myself, go, go, don't give up. Be the very best you can be. And once I faced those challenges head on and I did my best, I would ultimately shift the room and create something that they couldn't do. So there's definitely still an ignorance when a black woman walks in the room and they're like, you couldn't have done all those things for Gaga. That just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it hurt like hell. I thought after I got out of making the band, great, I'm going to build a superstar. I, after I built a superstar from scratch, I was like, they got to give me mine. No, they actually tried to strip me of the knowledge of that. But again, it was for a reason. I had to dance my dance. It's because I wasn't going to go down in history as someone's choreographer. Mm -hmm. But glory to God for the gift that he's given me. It wasn't about a man. It was about God and truly about his gift that he's given me and the power and authority he has over any man defining someone else's purpose. What was your, uh, we talked with Lori Ann Gibson, boom cap. Uh, I love saying that, uh, your, your road. Yes. Your road to Damascus. Cause you know, there's a lot of God in your conversation. No, I mean, you know, there, there are, there are epiphanies, you know, that people arrive at 
um, what was the, the, the turning point or the, the moment in your life where you're like, ah, this is the answer? I honestly think it was writing the book, you know, because I've been going so hard for so long. And I've been fall, I've been beat down and I've been getting back up. I've been slipping, I've been falling, I've been getting back up. And when I wrote the book, I had to go back to the beginning in order to understand the steps. And when I went back and I saw what I had persevered through and what I had overcome, it was only then that I understood, you know? And now I understand. Now I'm at step eight. I'm living my dream. So it is a process to greatness. Um, And I think the most important thing is that people should be okay with the process. The process needs to be celebrated. It needs to be welcomed. Everybody wants to be something overnight. But what you put in it is what you get out. If you if you have to sustain a big dream, then that has to be produced. That comes at a cost. So it's about understanding how to sustain what it is you need to sustain in order to live your dreams. 